Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. I am super excited because today is our very first interview. I am here with my dear friend and former personal trainer, Grace Webster, and I am super excited to hear her story of transformation because even though I've known Grace for a few years and I know bits and pieces of her story, I haven't heard like the entire thing in sequence. So you guys are going to get to listen in on this conversation. It's going to be super valuable because Grace is one of those women who she's been able to overcome so many things in different areas of her life. And her mindset is just on fucking point. So uh, I'll read you her little bio before we get into it. Grace is a fitness and wellness coach at a martial arts gym. She specializes in mindset work relating to fitness and overall health and nutrition. She spent 20 years working as an accountant before changing careers and now spends her time doing work that's aligned with her purpose and life goals. Grace, welcome to the Feral Woman podcast. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. I'm so excited for this chat. Um, <laughs> Let's start off with the very first question. What does being a feral woman mean to you? Yeah, uh, what a question. <laughs> I feel <laughs> like I feel like when people uh, think of the word feral, which I just recently found out I've been mispronouncing my entire life. So thanks to your podcast. Now I know how to pronounce it. Uh, but when you think of feral, like you think of a feral animal who's like, you know, don't come near me. I'm going to attack you, like all of that stuff. And I think there's like kind of a negative connotation with that word. But I think for me, feral just means literally like, you know, like untamed, untrained. I'm good on my own, you know, and that's, you know, and then as it relates to me, that's like being authentically myself. I'm not living within societal constraints of what I should look like, what I should behave like, what I should sound like. And uh, uh, you know, so <laughs> I'm not the feral cat in the corner, like, don't approach me, but I'm definitely not going to be put in a box. Yeah. Yeah. Is that whole, like, breaking free from captivity and going your own way, doing your own thing, and just, like, that wildness and that freedom, I think you embody so, so well, which is one of the reasons why I wanted <laughs> to have you on. <laughs> so what was, Thank like, the, the turning point for you in your life when you just decided, like, I'm not happy. Things need to change. Kind of like you're like, fuck this shit. Things need to be different. What was that moment for you? Uh, the, the most recent one you were there for, um, this was like the, the breakup, the breakup of 2021. <laughs> um, that was like, I, like every time I've been through a major relationship breakdown, which has been three times in my life, I have kind of tried to take stock of like, how was it sort of my fault you know not that it's ever you know one person's fault but what what could I have done differently to prevent this heartbreak and this pain that I'm feeling and there's always my own involvement and so I've realized over the years that my people pleasing is what caused me the most pain and so after that particular breakup that was my fuck it moment I was like fuck this I've tried three times Obviously, I have to change something about me and how I'm viewing my life and what my priorities are. So I decided I'm never going to bend to other people's needs, wants, desires ever again. And that's not to say that I couldn't have good relationships in my life, but it's no longer going to be something I'm bending over backwards for. I'm just going to put myself where I need to be and do what makes me feel good and feel happy and accomplished. Do you think you were always in people pleaser mode before that point? Was that something that you experienced right from childhood? Yes, a hundred percent. That was a childhood thing. I was seeking approval. I had a toxic relationship with my mother um, and we had kind of this, my parents were in the eyes of others. They were seen a lot. Uh, so they held positions on various boards or different places in their life that required a public image. And so we had to be perfect kids on the outside. We had to be very well-groomed. And, you know, I it was the 80s, so I had the poofy dresses with the crinoline and the permed hair and all that, even though... Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I was the biggest tomboy ever, you know? Like, if I ever got sent to school in that outfit, it would be destroyed by morning recess, you know? And But that was... So you had to be the good girl. You had to be quiet. You had to be well-spoken, all of this stuff. And then that started then. And the grades had to be high, you know, nothing below an A was acceptable. So I just learned very early on that everyone else's opinion is the only thing that matters. And you have to make other people happy or you're going to be in 
a lot of trouble, I guess. It's not like you're in emotional pain from them. They, you're already in emotional pain because you're doing something that's not serving yourself. But you're going to be in trouble and you're going to be yelled at and you're going to have to deal with all of that. And I think when you're a child and these people are providing you sustenance and a place to live, <laughs> you're going to do what you need to do. Yeah. And we just assume that adults know best. And when now that we're adults, we know that none of us really have it all figured out. But back then it's like, well, if that's what I'm supposed to do, if that's what's going to help me have a better experience and not get yelled at, not get shit, I'm just going to kind of toe the line and do the things. And just image was everything, right? So you're towing the line yeah. because it's the image of two other people and what they think that their family and their life should look like. Yeah. And I say look like, because it's not at all what it was. It's just what it looked like on paper. Yeah. So what was like when you decided to break free and make those changes, what did that process look like for you? Like, was there, like, did you read any books? Did you come across anyone who had sort of mastered this area and applied what they were teaching or share with us the the process of breaking free? Uh, right away, I bought a bunch of books on Amazon. I probably sent you the photo when they arrived. Like The Art of Happiness was one of them. Um, and then there was another book by Byron Katie, who I love, that is called I Need Your Love. Is that true? I think that's the name of the book. And it is her typical strategy of challenging thoughts. And it was like, I need someone to love me and I need to love them in, in order to be worthy of anything is kind of like the mindset that you're breaking out of. And that book was really instrumental because it's like, is that true? That's her big question always. Is that true? Really? You need somebody else to love you? Oh, maybe not. And so you kind of delve into that. The Art of Happiness, again, it's a Buddhist book <laughs> and it's like, you are responsible for your own happiness. That was the biggest thing for me was realizing, oh, it's up to me to make myself happy, no one else. And so what that looked like literally was me locking myself in the gym for three hours in the afternoon and working through that physical and mental pain at the same time. So training for that big event that I did when I did the big Spartan trifecta out of nowhere, having never done <laughs> Spartan races before, so I just set my sights on that and I'm like, I'm going to learn how to run a half marathon in six months and I'm going to learn how to do pull-ups and all of this strength work and stuff. Like I was already good at some stuff, but just honing in on those skills for endurance sports caused me a lot of physical pain, which was a great way to manifest my emotional pain. And then I got to work through that when it's just you and the treadmill for three and a half hours, there's a lot of thinking that goes on. So I was able to kind of work through that every single day for six months and I became a completely new version of myself as you saw like the the shift was ridiculous <laughs> I'm not even the same person at all no no I remember you were you were still in the relationship I think when we met mm -hmm. and then yeah. you broke free from it um I love that you talk about bringing in the physical activity because so much of this has to do with feel, like having emotions and programming and patterns that are literally stuck in our bodies. Like these things that we mm -hmm. grew up with, these ideas that we think are normal when it comes to relationships and ways of being, they're integrated into our body. And through that movement, through that exercise, not only did you get time to process things mentally and emotionally, but on a physical level, you were like cleansing <laughs> that shit out of your system. Literally. Yeah. And uh, every time I would be struggling, you know, you love the sandbag, I would carry that 100 pound sandbag for 100 yards. And it was tough. Um, and, and bear crawling for 100 yards. But that whole time, I'm like, this is what you want. This is who you want to be. You want to be uncomfortable because you can handle this and whatever they've told you and whoever you've been before, that's not you anymore. Oh my God. We have to talk about sandbag for a second. We're going to go on a little <laughs> tangent. This is my favorite thing this ever. This is going to be the most well-told story. <laughs> Both of our listeners are going to hear this over and over. <laughs> okay, guys. So the sandbag thing. Um, when I trained with Grace, we did a combination of like Muay Thai and strength and conditioning. And there's this fucking hundred pound sandbag that the guys would carry, Grace would carry, um, as part of their workouts. And one day during our training, it was my turn to carry the sandbag. And immediately my mind was like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. Because I think I was maybe a hundred and, I don't know, 125, 130 pounds at the time. And I thought lifting that much weight and actually carrying it was something that was physically impossible. And Grace 
<laughs> lovingly, lovingly reminded me <laughs> with maybe a little bit of yelling that I could do it. And I remember that day, I don't know if I actually cried. I know I cried on the inside when you were supporting me and telling me that I could do it and you helped me break free from this story that I was telling myself that I wasn't strong enough. And when I was able to pick that up and cart that little fucking bag back and forth across the gym, I felt like I had just quantum leaped into a new version of myself, right? That whole experience that you led me through was one of the most transformational things ever. So anyone listening, if you're feeling like you're incapable, if you're feeling low on yourself, find yourself a sandbag, <laughs> find yourself a trainer <laughs> yeah. or a rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do something physically that you don't think you can do. And I strongly advise having a professional with you so you don't hurt yourself and actually do anything <laughs> stupid. But it was so pivotal because like, it's so easy. I think, especially for women, like we get caught up in our heads so much and we overthink and we tend to believe the bullshit that's in our minds. And I know guys do this too, but I think for women, it's even worse. I think a lot of us believe the bullshit and when we can prove ourselves wrong and when we can prove those stories wrong, it's like it shatters beliefs and builds new programming instantly. And then the ceiling just doesn't exist anymore. I mean, yeah. that Spartan that I did the, the trifecta, which was for those of you listening, if you don't know, uh, Spartan race is a really cool franchise of obstacle racing. It combines uh, both flat and hill and mountain racing with all kinds of various different obstacles of different types. So there's push, pull, carry, climb, all kinds of stuff like that. And I had completed a trifecta, which was over two days doing the 21K, 10K and 5K. It was hell. The first one. (laughs) (laughs) It was hell the first time and going through it, there was a lot of mental stuff that I had to get through because I'd promised my teammates that even though I wasn't doing a fight that I would be uh, bringing back some kind of hardware for the gym. And I didn't want to just quit, even though my brain was like, if you quit, no one would blame you. This is really hard. And they would understand that you've been out here for seven hours and you're you know tired and everything hurts and you run out of food and run out of electrolytes and everything else and um once I got through that I was like oh thank god that's done right and then I went and did the two more the next day and then when I got home I was like huh if I can do one I can do three right and it's like (laughs) I already did it and so then I got the season's pass and then this year everyone's like are you crazy you're like quadrupling your race volume because it wasn't just three trifectas I was doing tough mutter I was doing additional races that I didn't even need just to get as many in as I could and then I did this Mount Tremblant race which was like the hardest one and it was like some 7,000 feet of elevation gain overall and I tore my MCL on it it was just nuts but I was like you can do it And then I kind of made this thing of like, the only reason I can't do it is if a medic physically takes me off the course against my will. And that mindset is now my mindset. It's like, if you physically can't do one more rep, or if you physically fall over and can't get up, that's when you're done. Versus before I started when I was like, oh man, this hurts so bad. If it hurts, I'm going to stop. And then I just wouldn't let myself do that. You know, that was kind of a blend of, of, people pleasing a little bit because I wanted to make my teammates proud of me. But at the same time, I don't think it was people pleasing in the sense of like, I have to do this despite myself. You know, I really wanted to achieve it too, but that ceiling just disappears as soon as you do the sandbag or the whatever. And I do make, make ladies do that on a regular basis. Now, like if they're a small little lady like you, I'm like, Hey, guess what? We're going to do this today. And uh, last weekend at another lady around your size, it was like her second session with me ever. And I said, okay, we're going to pick that up. And she's kind of looking at it. And (laughs) I said, you can do it. And she did. And she did like three laps of the turf. No problem. Nice. Yeah. Anyway, that was a long rambling. Sorry. (laughs) I love a good tangent. (laughs) Um, So coming back to like the big transformation that you led yourself through, (laughs) what do you feel were like your biggest challenges during that time? By far, the biggest challenge was overcoming that urge to seek outside approval for what I was doing. So even though I w- I knew that I was doing it for me, I still wanted that like add a girl from everybody else. And breaking free from that is it, like even today, it's still a struggle, you know, like I still but I mean, I think it's a it's finding that line of like, enjoying when people are hyping you up and being excited for you. And then just also straddling that line of like, I am fully doing this just for me. And it really doesn't matter. But at the beginning, it's like, 
oh, look at, I'm, I'm going to go do this race. Aren't you proud of me? Oh, don't you think I'm doing really well? Look at, this is my time. This is my 5k time. I got it down to whatever. Like, don't you think that's great? Versus just being like, oh, sick. I did 1% better than I did yesterday. Or uh, my, my time is improved by three minutes or whatever. And just feeling content with that. And it's still a struggle for me to give myself validation versus seeking it from others. Yeah. And it's weird because in the end, their validation means fuck all. They can withdraw that validation. That's what happened to me with that relationship breakdown. I was love bombed. I, you know, it was ended up being a narcissistic situation, even though I didn't recognize it at the time. And so all of that hype at the beginning was just suddenly taken away. And that hole that was left was just this chasm of pain and like, why am I no longer good enough? So anybody could just say, I'm not going to give you that anymore. And then suddenly now you're worth nothing. There's no way that's possible. Your worth is the same as it was yesterday, whether they want to admit it or not. So giving myself that has become of the utmost importance. Yeah, I just got chills as you were saying that, because I think (laughs) for so many women, we, it's like, we look for the good grades in school. And then once you get into business, if you have your own business, your worth is measured by how much Mm. money you make. And then with relationships, how pretty you are, how many, you know, great relationships you have, whatever it is. It's always like this outside measure that a lot of us are looking for, for the outside validation. And when we're chasing that, when we're looking for that, it's like a, you know, like a fucking carrot on the end of a stick. It's, it's always moving. And I know for me, it was a certain income goal. And I thought once I hit that goal, I'm going to feel so different. I'm going to feel so proud of myself. I'm going to feel so confident. And I saw that number in my PayPal account. And I'm like, I don't feel anything at all. I don't feel the least bit different. And that was like such a turning point. Cause it's like, I need to learn how to feel really fucking good about myself without needing anyone else to tell me I'm doing a good job, whether that's my bank account, men or people on social media. That's the path I went down with my accounting firm too. I have similar experience, you know, I was chasing all of these contracts and, you know, the more fancy lunches and stuff I had out and the more expensive the bottle of wine and cut of meat, you know, the more I thought I would feel accomplished and like, okay, now I've made it. And I just kept chasing it and chasing it. And we, you know, from five figures to six figures and and up and up and up. Nope. Still felt exactly the same, still miserable, still hate this, still don't feel comfortable. Like the, the money was there but I still was chasing more and more and I still felt insecure about it. So what was the point in trying to have this image and trying to chase and run with these people that I really didn't even belong with? Like their the personalities weren't people that I wanted to be in my life long-term. And, but again, you know, I thought that that was what we were supposed to do in business. You're supposed to be successful and have the car and the job and the office in a high rise and so on. Tick off all the boxes of success. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and even like being a female entrepreneur should have been enough. You know, in a male dominated industry, I'm a female, I'm heading up my own firm, I'm respected in the industry, I should have sat back and been like, look what I did, this is great. But no. Yeah, and I think for a lot of high achievers, they don't stop and look at what they've done. And they just keep going after that next goal, next goal, next goal. And it's like, if you just stop for a sec and look back at everything that you've led yourself through everything you've manifested, like ground into that energy of like, holy fuck, I did this and let yourself feel the gratitude and feel the pride that comes along with that. Yeah, because when you work fucking hard, you should sit back and be like, oh, damn, look at all this stuff that I did. Yeah. Instead of being like, oh, there's the five more things I can accomplish. And then once I get those done, then everything's good. Yeah. (laughs) The list never ends. (laughs) Along with not feeling like you need validation from other people, um, which is always, I think, a work in progress, like you mentioned. What do you feel has been the biggest change with your relationship with yourself and with other people as a result of doing this inner work? For me, I feel like I really, at this point, I've gotten to a point where I love and trust and accept myself for who I am. And I'm not trying to hide things that I once thought were like undesirable or maybe society would say, hey, you know, that's kind of weird. Maybe you shouldn't let that part of yourself out. Uh, This was part of another book that I read, Dark Side of the Light Chasers by Debbie Ford, which you've heard me mention a zillion times. I love that book great book yeah and so you know exactly what I'm talking about where she goes through that whole exercise of like write down every word that is negative and which are the ones that are the worst for you to read out loud which are the ones that make you want to cringe and and just turn away and then start 
figuring out why those words make you feel that way. And what was the first time somebody told you this was bad because you didn't put that on yourself. Someone had to tell you that. And so throughout this process, just learning who I am and learning what I'm all about truly has been so great. And then now I can, my relationship with myself has changed. And then that has changed my relationship with others in that anyone who no longer passes the vibe check is fucking gone. You're out. (laughs) And it's been like Edward Scissorhands. It's really been bad sometimes because I'm like, nope, I'm done with you. And I'm sure you probably have gotten to this point too, where you're like, I immediately know you're just no longer serving me. And it's not to say that I don't care about those people. and, And I understand it can cause pain to end friendships that have maybe been years or decades long. But my relationships with other people are only going to be with people that are going to uplift me, that are going to support my goals, that are going to be good listeners to me when I need it, you know, stuff like that. I'm not going to be just keeping these toxic people around just because I want more friends in my life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's important too, especially again for women, like we're, we're taught that it's mean to end relationships. It's not nice if you're not still friends with little Susie Smith from high school. When in reality, Mm -hmm. people come into our life and they move out of our life and learning how to just be okay with that ebb and flow, I find has been, that's been one of the biggest things for me. Like the older I get, the more I realize, like, I don't need to have people in my life if they're not if they're not my people, like even if they were my mm-hmm. people for, you know, a couple of years, it doesn't mean they're always going to be with us and learning how to let go and move forward without needing that, that group, that little tribe with you can be really challenging for a lot of women. And I think your tribe can morph over time. And it doesn't mean that you have any ill will towards those people, yeah. but just as you make these shifts and changes in your life, those people just might not fit anymore. It doesn't make them a bad person. It doesn't make you a bad person. It yeah. just means that you're no longer connected in the same way that you were. And I fully believe people are here for a season. And sometimes those seasons ending can be painful because like you say, you, you don't want to let go. Or sometimes that person, maybe you don't fit with them anymore and they've left and you're like, oh, this really hurts. And then you got to kind of go through those feelings. But uh, people are are there for a season and appreciate them while they're here. But when it's time to go, it really is time to go. Yeah. So what do you think is your, let's see, how do I want to phrase this? I would love for you to brag a little bit. Like, what are you most proud of? (laughs) Like, let's, again, this is the thing. Women, we're not, right? It's it's okay for, like, the guys to, like, brag and talk about Oh, I don't mind bragging. I just don't know how to pick. (laughs) (laughs) Hmm. Two things. One or two things, like. So what am I, what am I most proud of? Um, I think right now I'm, I'm most proud of, working with people on this coaching level um, because I feel like it's a more tangible difference. You know, doing the business that I did was a, I picked that career because it made me money. I still work in that career because it makes me money. Uh, Helping people on a day-to-day basis with their taxes. I mean, it's not the most rewarding (laughs) from, for me on a personal level, but so I think just elevating myself to a level where I'm able to help other people in their life and make the changes that's needed to achieve happiness for them is actually been really rewarding for me. And it's not about me, but I mean, I just find it so fulfilling to be able to share and help people kind of prevent pain and heartbreak in their own life by changing their physical fitness, their mental health, their nutrition, whatever it may be. That's, I think I'm really proud of the fact that I've been able to bring myself up to a level where people actually want to hear what I have to say and they actually come to me to help them because I know how hard that is. I was one of those people five years ago and I know how it feels to walk into a place and just want to be as small as possible and hide in the corner, have nobody look at you, you know? (laughs) So for right now, it has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with, you know, overall success. It's just that um, I'm actually able to express kind of these lessons to people in a way that makes sense to other people now versus just working away on my own and grinding through it. And I love how you share, like on your social media, you (coughs) share the work that you're doing. Like you embody your work so well. I love your reels where it shows you like struggling and quote unquote (laughs) failing, right? Because a lot of what we see in the fitness industry, it's like the perfect, like everything is so, I don't know, everyone's doing the exercise. I know what you're saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. (laughs) The influencers, the people with the perfect, quote unquote, perfect bodies, the people who just seem like they have it all together newsflash those people don't but uh you know it's 
yeah, my my Instagram is just showing what I think is just an average person going through a fitness journey. And if I can inspire a couple people along the way, that's great. And I think I'm pretty relatable. That's not to say that those influencers aren't relatable. For sure, I'm, I'm sure people can relate to them on some level. But for me, I, I just kind of look like your average Joe. <laughs> and I'm, I'm working my way through my workouts and I struggle with the same shit that they struggle with. And I do bring that into my classes too. Like guys, trust me, what you're feeling right now, I felt that at 3.30 this afternoon when I was doing this bullshit over here. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, one of the most recent reels you made with the, is it the GHD? machine is that what it's called <laughs> where yeah. you were sharing like you got you were like queasy and nobody's stuff. Like, gonna know no but how would they know because <laughs> <laughs> I remember going through workouts and wanting to quit so bad because I thought I was gonna puke and then when I see my trainer former trainer experience the same thing it's like okay we're in this together we got this and it's that whole like when one woman rises up no matter what category of life that's in, we all get to rise together. So I love that you're oh, so yeah. open and you share all that shit with everyone. Well, I have, yeah, I have to, I mean, I'm just another human, right? I'm not some elite athlete that's performing on an Olympic level or any of those things. I'm not a world champ. I'm another student at the gym. And I mean, I puke alongside the rest of them. <laughs> there's, there's a drill that, that uh, my business partner does when he's coaching and it's an alternating kick for kick drill on the bag. And he calls it the grace puke drill because every time I, I almost heave or end up having to run quickly. And there was a day where he was even like, Hey, we got new mats. Don't puke here. Just puke in my shirt. Like he held his shirt out and he's like, oh my God. <laughs> like if you're going to spew, spew into this kind of, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, but that one day that I did end up throwing up, I sprinted across to the front puked in the garbage can, came back. There was still a minute and a half left of the drill. So I just got back on the bag and started doing it. And he actually gave a little speech to the class. He's like, puking didn't make her weak. She left, she threw up. She by rights could have just left class, but she came back and finished it. So that's warrior shit. That's not weakness. It's not that she's not in shape. You know, they, they push you purposely to your limits in Muay Thai especially. And that is on purpose to, to mentally get you where you need to be in that fighter mindset. And the same thing with the, with the strength workouts, you know, that GHD is terrible because you're up, down, up, down, up, down, and then you pop off and you're like, okay, dizzy, but in everything, you know, and I struggle with pull-ups and I struggle with snatches and I just like to have my students understand that it, that it is not a linear thing where you just go up and up and up and up and up. Like you're going to just kind of come up and then you're going to plateau and then you might come back down and, it's really important for people to see that, I think, especially yeah. when they're overcoming something like this and trying to break free of the old mindset shifts. They, they don't you don't want them to fall back and be like, well, I failed. So I guess I'm just going to stay who I am forever and be miserable. Yeah. And that's where our brain wants to go, because our brain's wired for the, the familiar and the comfortable. Yeah. And so it's so easy for us to be like, well, this is what I'm used to. It's not that bad. It kind of sucks, but it's not that bad. It could be worse. And people just go back into that old pattern. It's funny how you say comfortable. I feel like comfortable people need to understand the difference between it's like, you're not actually comfortable, you're miserable. But there's comfort in familiarity. It's the devil, you know, yeah. so to speak, right? Yeah, you already know, this is what you're in for. And it's really hard to push through and break through. And you don't know what's over there. Maybe it's harder. Maybe it's going to forever be harder. Why would I do that? And I already struggled with this. So I may as well just say stay back here and just sit here because mm -hmm. I know what this feels like and I can deal with it on a day-to-day -day, which it's the, those limiting beliefs are going to really stop a lot of potential progress and success for people yeah I remember that with um the old nine to five job I worked at like there were certain aspects of it that were great and there were certain aspects that I absolutely hated and the parts that I hated I'm like well at least I I know what I'm going to walk into every day when I go to the office I know exactly what I'm going to face and it might make me miserable but what's on the other side of these walls that was terrifying but breaking mm -hmm. free from that and knowing like there's always going to be different problems for us to solve there's always going to be different things to navigate through i see your kitty in the background hello kitty yeah, she already she already walked across the front she went and sat on the dog <laughs> and now she's before it was really funny because she was there's like pillows behind me and she's managed to move the cushion this is the couch you gave me you know that long chaise cushion it got pulled out and so she's got pillows across the gap and then she goes under and makes a little den underneath there of the pillows and she kept popping in and out like a little prairie dog and I'm like it's so distracting I'm trying not to look at her but she's so funny <laughs> oh my god real life stuff I love it um yeah, animals 
as we close up here, if you could share like one piece of advice, I know it's hard to narrow it down to one thing, but like one piece of advice for a woman who's sitting in her life right now and she's feeling stuck as fuck, whether that's in a relationship, she knows she needs to leave a job she doesn't want to be in, or even like with her health and fitness, like, and she's just feeling like I'm never going to fucking get out of this. What would you tell her to get the fucking fire lit under her ass? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I would say, and it's it's really hard, but you have to be honest and take an honest and objective look around you and ask yourself, is this what you really want? This situation right here, is this what you want? Yes or no? And if the answer is no, you have to be ready to look at what you need to change and fucking do it. You can't just be like, oh, what if, and oh, what if this other person who's not in my control suddenly changes and everything is good again? Or what if my job just, you know, suddenly becomes better because I decided (laughs) that one day it might, you know, instead of just leaving and doing the thing that you know is going to make you happy, you have to reject the opinions of others. And like, you know, I had a lot of opinions about switching careers in my late 30s. Um, during a pandemic where my job was illegal for a time, (laughs) (laughs) you know, we had officers coming to the door of the business to see if anybody was in there and we just keep them locked out and tell them they couldn't enter private property. You know, like there was a lot of opinions. Your job is unstable. You're not going to make enough money, blah, 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 blah. And I said, I, I, I hear what you're saying and I reject it. It could, it could be true. I hope it's not. But I'm not going to listen to that because I'm drawn to this. And this is what's making me happy. And it was really like a magnetic pull for me. And so if I had been less honest with myself and and just followed what I was told to do and followed the opinions of others, I'd still be miserable. And I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. And I wouldn't be sitting here on this podcast because that was like a chain reaction. The coaching and led to the nutrition and led to courses on habit change and psychology around weight loss and fitness and all of these things have gone down the line to create this really cool, I don't even know what it is, this niche that I have of all of these different things that I'm working on to help other humans become better humans. So I guess the the short version is sit back, take an honest and objective look at what you need to change. And then just fucking do it. Just put one foot in front of the other and do it. Stop making excuses. No, you don't have to wait till you have more money or until you're in better shape or until this is better or that is better or this person is better. No, none of that. Just fucking take that step out the door and go and don't look back. I love it. Oh my gosh. So where (laughs) can people find you if they want to connect with you online? So I am on Instagram at train with coach grace. Uh, You could find the Coach Grace podcast starting January the 9th on Spotify and Amazon Music and hopefully Apple Podcasts if I can get Apple organized. I am on TikTok at Train with Coach Grace. So that's where people can find me. If you are in the London area, check out my Train with Coach Grace Instagram to find my gym. Come see me in person there as well. Yes. Highly, highly, highly recommend working with coach Grace. <laughs> Life-changing. Awesome. Yeah, so online too. People can, people can work with me online too. That is not just an in-person thing. If you are looking for fitness, I do provide online programming as well. One-to-one with whatever you want to do. If it's sandbag carries or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be known as like the sandbag coach. <laughs> That's fine. We can do sandbag all day. I'll just have to buy some more amazing all right guys i'm gonna put grace's info in the show notes and thank you so much grace for being here it was amazing i'm sure i will have you back on the show because i just want to pick your brain and talk to you all the time all right all right guys i will talk to you later have an amazing amazing rest of your day and i will catch you in the next episode